You cannot run FireEXF 6.x or older and FireEXF version 7 simultaneously on the same computer. You must uninstall the older version of FireEXF before you install FireEXF version 7. The easiest way to configure your new FireEXF 7 system is to back up your current FireEXF 6.5 system and restore it in FireEXF version 7. A system backup saves the FireEXF server configuration, all user settings, all workflow settings including presets, EPL linearization files, spot color tables and profiles, along with the printer configuration excluding the printer's IP address. Only a backup created using Fiery XF version 6.5 will be able to be restored in Fiery XF version 7. If you have an older version of Fiery XF installed, you will either need to upgrade it to version 6.5 prior to creating the backup or manually move the files from your previous version of Fiery XF into your new Fiery XF 7 installation. Because of the time involved, unless you have numerous workflows, printer configurations, and presets in your older system, upgrading is recommended for Fiery XF version 6.4 only. You will be able to use all of the custom EPL linearization files, spot color tables, and profiles that you used in your older Fiery XF version. If you are currently running Fiery XF version 6 and have a valid Software Maintenance and Support Agreement SMSA, or an ESP contract in place that entitles you to receive an upgrade to Fiery XF version 7, you should receive an email notification, or you can check the status of your SMSA yourself from the welcome screen in your Fiery XF version 6 installation. You will receive notification that your license activation code has been generated and you will use it along with your dongle to license your Fiery XF7 installation. The license activation code is required to activate the software. Do not begin the upgrade process until you have been notified that your license activation code has been created and is ready for download. Note that once you have used your dongle to migrate your license from Fiery XF version 6 to version 7, you will no longer be able to download your version 6 licenses, nor will your newly created LAC code work with any version of Fiery XF prior to version 7. In addition, ensure that you have internet access available on the computer on which you are installing Fiery XF 7 as it will be needed to successfully complete the licensing process. Finally, temporarily deactivate any virus scanning during installation. If your Fiery XF server and client are installed on the same Windows or Macintosh computer, you can check which version of Fiery XF is currently installed. To check, right-click on Fiery XF Control and select the Show License option. A list of currently installed updates is displayed on the Update Information tab. If you are running Fiery XF version 6.4, you must first update it to version 6.5. Make sure you have downloaded the pre-activated license for Fiery XF 6.5 through the Activation Wizard. You can start the Activation Wizard by right-clicking Fiery XF Control and then clicking Activate Fiery XF. The updater for Fiery XF 6.5 will not run if you do not have the Fiery XF 6.5 license installed on your computer. Begin by exiting all Fiery XF programs. Next, right click on Fiery XF Control and select the Fiery XF Online Update option. In the window that appears, click Next. Select the checkbox of the update that you want to install and click Next. Updates must be installed one at a time, and if more than one update is available, make sure that you install the oldest update first. Follow the on-screen instructions to download the update files and to complete installation. Restart the Fiery XF server and repeat the procedure until all the available updates are installed, restarting your computer if prompted to do so. 
Upon completion of the update procedure, you can move on to create a backup of your Fire EXF system. A system backup includes the Fire EXF server configuration, all user settings, all workflow settings including presets, EPL linearization files, spot color tables and profiles, and each of your printer configurations, excluding the printer's IP address. To create your Fire EXF 6.5 system backup, in System Manager, select File and then the Backup option from the drop-down list. In the window that appears, select the checkboxes of the items that you want to include in the backup. To ensure that the backup file is not deleted when you uninstall your current version of Fire EXF, make sure that the desktop is defined as the backup location and then click Save. When the backup file has been successfully created, it is also recommended that you copy it to an external storage device or network share for safety. You can now uninstall Fire EXF 6.5. On your Windows computer or on your Fire Pro server, navigate to the control panel and launch Programs and Features or Apps and Features. In the list of installed programs, locate and click on the Fire EXF entry and then select Uninstall. Click Yes to confirm that you want to completely remove the selected application and all of its features. When prompted, restart the computer to complete the uninstall procedure. You can now install Fire EXF version 7. Remember, Fire EXF server can no longer be installed on a Macintosh computer. Refer to the earlier modules in this e-learning course for details on how to install Fire EXF 7 server and Fire Command Workstation. Now to restore from the previously created backup, you will need to have Command Workstation installed and launched and connected to the newly installed Fire EXF 7 server. Once connected to the server, launch the server manager by clicking on the small dotted icon to the right of the server listed on the left-hand column of Command Workstation. In the server manager, select the server icon, then select Backup and Restore, and finally select the Restore option. By default, the list displays backup files that are saved to the desktop that have been created using Fire EXF 7. Because your backup was created using a previous version of Fire EXF, it does not appear in the list. Click on the Choose button, navigate to the desktop, select the backup file created earlier using Fire EXF 6.5, and click Open. Back in the main interface, with the file selected, click Restore. A window appears telling you that the restore process has been successfully completed and that you need to restart the server to apply the changes. Click OK. Close the Server Manager. Launch Fiery Server Control and restart the server. After the server has been restarted, you can simply click on the Connect button in Command Workstation, log in to the Fiery Server, Launch the Server Manager. Select the printer icon in the left column. Click on each of the restored printers and ensure that the connection settings and hot folders are correct. System Restore is now complete. There are some differences that you will see when you have restored your Fiery XF 6.5 backup in Fiery XF 7. Each output device on Fiery XF6 is turned into a printer in Fiery XF7 as long as it has a unique connection setup. The name of the output device in version 6 will be used as the name of the printer in version 7. If multiple output devices share the same export path or the same IP address, then they will be merged into a single printer instance in Fiery XF7 and the name of the first instance that was created will be used for the name of the printer in Fiery XF7. Any print configuration preset assigned to an output device in Fiery XF6 
will be converted into a media in Fiery XF7. Any output device that does not have a print configuration preset assigned to it in Fiery XF6 will have a default EPL ICC calibration set assigned to it. The media name of the selected EPL will be used as the media name in Fiery XF7 for that printer. All workflows in Fiery XF6 will become workflows in Fiery XF7. You should examine your printers, media, and workflows after you restore your backup because there may be cases where you will need to do some fine tuning. One final important note. Although the default login to a Fiery XF server from within Command Workstation is admin for the user ID and Fiery.1 for the password, if you have restored from your Fiery XF 6.5 backup, the login ID and password will become those that you used in your Fiery XF 6.5 installation. This is often admin for the user ID and admin for the password. If you are running a version of Fiery XF older than version 6.5 and or you do not want to update to version 6.5 to create a compatible backup file, you can manually copy your linearization files, media and custom reference ICC profiles, custom spot color libraries, as well as your .3cc and .vcc color correction files from your older Fiery XF installation and paste them into the appropriate folders in your Fiery XF7 installation. The source and destination folders are the same folders in the old and new installations. On a Windows computer, these files are all found in the Program Data folder in the EFI subfolder. Custom calibration files and ICC media profiles are located in the My Profiles folder within the EFI Media Profiles folder. All other custom files will be found in various folders within the EFI, EFI XF Profiles folder structure. Custom spot color libraries will be in the spot color folder custom reference ICC profiles in the reference folder, and VCC and 3CC color adjustment files in the balance folder. On a Macintosh computer, instead of the program data folder, the files will be found in the application support folder in the library folder on your hard drive. After your files have been placed in the destination folders, restart your Fiery XF server and the files will be available for you to select when you create and configure your workflows and printers. This completes this module.